that's the reality. Like we're people out there playing with our actual bodies for your entertainment. So the least you could do is listen to us talk about Breonna Taylor or the number of people who've been murdered. And so I just see a really, really cool opportunity. And to speak to the point about athletes needing to, to talk up. Um, I think it's interesting that now we've gotten to a point where you'd expect athletes to speak up. Like you're almost like put the mic in the face. What do you have to say about this? But my challenge is always, why do we expect Kyrie Irving to speak up, but we don't expect the CEO of Facebook? Like what was their policy? Like they have just as much power and influence over where money goes, where how laws get made, how they lobby with the government. And so I think that's the change we're seeing now too, is like, we are expecting the CEOs from every company now to put out a statement. Like we're putting the mic in your face. Like Mm -hmm. what are your policies? What are you doing? And I think that's the accountability we're finally starting to see in society right now that I really appreciate. Hello, women's basketball fans. Welcome to Gotta Get Up, a new podcast for New York Liberty fans. I am your host, Erica Lindsay Ayala. On this podcast, I'll be talking to coaches, players, media members, and more about a WNBA original franchise, the New York Liberty. For this premiere, I spoke with Kia Clark, the Chief Operating Officer of the current team. We discussed the recent Juneteenth virtual celebration that the New York Liberty hosted featuring newest New York Liberty guard, Lasia Clarendon. In my conversation with Kia, we talk about the history of Juneteenth, the importance of the New York Liberty not only celebrating Juneteenth, but including local leaders in their conversation about Juneteenth and social justice. And Kia gives us a little bit of insight on what we can expect from the New York Liberty marketing team while the players compete in the condensed 2020 WNBA season taking place in Florida. Interwoven into this episode with Kia, you'll notice some clips from the Juneteenth virtual panel. And you can find the link to the full panel right here. And I will also pop that for you in the description box. Go check that out. It was an amazing panel with lots of great insight on why it is important for all of us to be present in this moment in history. Stick around to the end of this video to see a sneak peek of episode one featuring Ari Chambers. Let's get over to my interview with Kia Clark. All right, well, we are here with Kia Clark of the New York Liberty. Very excited, Kia, to chat with you about some of the festivities that the Liberty has in store for Friday in particular, June 19th or Juneteenth. Uh, So what can you tell us about how the Juneteenth celebrations came together and what fans can expect? Sure, you know, Juneteenth, and I think a lot of people um, as of late have been educated about this day and, and the commemoration and what it really means. And ironically, I had not known a ton about Juneteenth, you know, as a black woman living and growing up in a black family for much of my childhood. I discovered uh, the holiday when I was away at college and when I stumbled upon a festival out in Buffalo, New York. So, you know, it's come kind of full circle that the Liberty um, has been embarking on sort of this growth pattern of um, a commitment to social justice issues, a commitment to racial equality and bringing those types of themes to the forefront um, throughout the last four years, I would say. So in in that, you know, when we were in Westchester um, for the two seasons, it was at that point that um, White Plains actually celebrates a Juneteenth parade. And we participated during during the two seasons that we played up there. Um, So, you know, it's actually, I guess, timely, I would say that we were planning this Juneteenth event, this virtual event, prior to um, the recent murders and the recent national climate and the sentiment that we're kind of experiencing right now. But I think it's all the more important for us to have conversations like this, um, you know, surrounded around how Black Americans um, can evoke change and, you know, really a coming together of the minds. We're at this interesting time in American history where we're not experiencing things even remotely for the first time when it comes to some of the civil unrest, the peaceful protests, and the the very frank conversations about racism. 
but there does seem to be something different, right? Like a, a Juneteenth style, like, well, this isn't new, but it, maybe it, it's real this time um, feel to this. I, I want to, that, that's a lot for all of us, I think, as a, as a society to process. But I'm, I'm curious, as someone who, you know, holds an executive role with a, with a sports team in a league that has been very active in the last several years, um, how are you taking in uh, the opportunity that is presented in these very unfortunate killings and, and deaths that we've seen as of late? Sure. You know, I would, I would say it's, it's, it's a interesting vernacular to use that we're, we're taking advantage of it, but more, um, I'm actually proud to say that it's somewhere where we've been for several seasons. It's an unfortunate situation, but at every turn that we can shed light on and educate folks and educate our team and staff and really design ways to bring people together and come up with ways that we can impact different various pieces of the community. Um, I would venture to say that there are probably some people in our fan base who are unfamiliar with what the meaning of Juneteenth is. I would venture to say that there are some liberal and progressive minded folks who support the New York Liberty um, and wanna do more. So if we can provide that launching pad for them to be a part of something like this, and we look at it really, Erica, as an extension of our Unity platform. Um, you know, which again was born out of a really dark time, um, and and not something that was new. As you as you you know brought up, it's just um, this surreal reality when you see a human life um, taken and it's videotaped. Um, it affects us in a different way, and I think that's what we're all witnessing right now. People are really charged up, and they want to make a difference, and they want to use their voices, and they they want to be heard, and we are. I would say happy to to be an outlet and to you know be a platform where those types of conversations can happen. Justice, uh, freedom, justice, equality, and the power of our vote uh, influence unity change. That's that's what we see um, with the the wording for this June nineteenth Juneteenth celebration. Um, as as the panel started to come together, we'll run through the panel quickly, but. But why were those things, freedom, justice, equality, and then the vote? Uh, we, we sit here talking in 2020. Um, how, how did that language for, for the club come together? Sure. Those are broad reaching issues that, that really pan across everything I think that people are feeling and all the gripes that people wish um, you know could be improved upon at this time. It's, a, it's looking through the lens of um, you know pop culture, but taking these really political, if you will, um, themes that is a part of our news cycle right now. You know, it's it's everything in an election year that we should be talking about, and these are some of the the themes and issues that we've covered over time. Again, these are the things that we hear from our players directly. You know, when we have closed door meetings, um, you were there last season when we we really took a, a, a laser look, a laser focused look at criminal justice reform and how it affects women and how women are being incarcerated at a, a really high rate. Um, I think all of us will can appreciate how voting and who we elect affects economic inequalities. I think healthcare is a part of everything, you know, that's top of mind right now, especially for black Americans. And all of those things um, can be positively or negatively, if you so choose to sit out an election and you're not educated to the fact that, you know, elections are not just about the president, um, but they're about, you know, every single elected official in your community. Um, you know, from judges to mayors to police um, personnel. So all of those things working together, again, the theme um, got even tighter um, with everything that was going on. But, you know, the desire to do something at this time in June was there um, previously. And I think looking at the the panelists that we have here, we have Angela Yee of the, the Breakfast Club, Garrett Temple, an advocate also representing the Brooklyn Nets, Lasia Clarendon, who is a new addition to the New York Liberty, but uh, is, is a veteran of the WNBA and has always found ways to, to elevate herself and others um, with her, her professional sports platform, 
Rhapsody, we we know, you know, for the fans that, that know the Liberty songs, Liberty Loud. Uh, and then Topeka Sam uh, from Ladies of Hope Ministries. We spoke, as you mentioned last year for, for the Unity Week, about the importance of not just elevating women, but also elevating the community. Can you tell me a little bit about these panelists and, and how you felt that they could elevate all of the, the issues, as you said, that are in the news cycle, that have been a part of the conversations that the Liberty are having, but also how they connect to, to New York and to Brooklyn. Yeah. I'm proud to say that everyone on the panel, we would call a friend of the franchise at this point. You know, as you said, Rhapsody penned our anthem um, that we began using in Arena last season. But more importantly, Rhapsody is one of the um, voices at the forefront of many issues affecting Black Americans right now. Um, she is spreading the word like nobody's business. If you're not following her on Instagram and seeing, you know, just the really positive things that she has to say. And that was the connectivity between us and her and why we really asked her to, to do that anthem for us. Um, if you didn't check out her album um, that dropped in 2019, um, with every title symbolizing a strong Black woman, it's like you can't get a better alignment for what the WNBA represents and what, you know, the Liberty are trying to do, especially in this space. I mean, I've always been a big fan of, you know, with great reward comes great responsibility. Um, and I feel like as artists, as much as we have the, um, the duty to entertain through our art, we also have the opportunity to educate. Um, but in the, same, in the same vein, I feel like everybody has a different role. Everybody doesn't become an artist to be a Martin Luther King, to be a Malcolm X. Some people really just want to be a James Brown. Mm -hmm. And there's a place for a James Brown. There's a place for somebody to play both roles. You could be a Harry Belafonte. You could speak through your music um, or you could be out in the streets marching. You can make phone calls. So, you know, I've just been very wary of putting my energy in the right place. I'm not one to call out an artist for what they aren't or aren't doing because I know a lot of things happen behind the scenes. Um, you know, right. so... I always try to keep that in mind where, you know, you may not be doing what I'm doing, but that doesn't mean you aren't doing anything. Right. Um, that doesn't mean you haven't been doing something for a long time. Like just your voice and your music sometimes is enough to uplift people. I was talking to Dr. Cornell West and he was saying, you know, as much, you know, pain that we have and that we have to get out in the streets, we, we can't forget the joy either because that's part of the fuel to keep the movement going. Um, so, you know, I, I feel like it's up to an artist to figure out how do I want to show up? You know, do I want to be the ones that, that, that's making phone calls? Do I want to post every single day? Do I want to get behind the scenes and call my governor and call this person, the attorney general of this state and use my influence to make, you know, to change his mind? So I, do I want to just make music, you know, for the time? I think there's so many things that you can do. Uh, even looking at the baby, the baby is getting with his police commissioner in Charlotte and they're having a, a, a panel, which is powerful. So I think everybody has an opportunity to do something different. J. Cole just going to, you know, rallies and marching, him being there empowers people, you know, and it, it takes all of us. So just him being there and, and people seeing like that means something too. So, you know, I, I just try to appreciate what everybody brings to the table, but I definitely think it's an artist's duty, you know, to do what they can. I love the song Little Baby put out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I wasn't expected that, but you know, that was powerful. Like it inspired me. So, you know, that's how I look at it for artists. Um, likewise, Topeka K. Sam, again, I would call, you know, Topeka and the work that she does in the communities within New York, it, it, it incredibly important for us um, and for her. And this is a symbiotic relationship where we've attended her events and she's joined up on ours. And in conversations that I've been in lately, you know, we're writing legislation and trying to change legislation around what's happening with police brutality. But we're forgetting that when people are arrested like Sandra Bland and you end up in the custody of the cops, it's no longer cops now, right? These are correction officers. These are a different level of uh, law enforcement that actually are having the same ability and harming our people the same way. And so if we start tying in some of these th things together around systemic racism and the issues, then I think we'll have a better outcome instead of putting everything in these little pockets and buckets and trying to solve each problem separately, we need something that's overarching that will help to really define the lines that are happening. That way, everyone can be held accountable at any time under one piece of legislation instead of several. Garrett, um, clearly we're, we're new family with, with the Brooklyn Nets and Garrett is just um, such a cerebral person. He has aspirations to, to have a, a 
a career in law um, once he's done playing basketball. And he's just had some really amazing things to say in some of the internal meetings where, you know, he's spoken out. Like Rhapsody said, the local elections are the ones that honestly mean the most. Uh, if you look back, you know, how many of us can name our uh, the district attorney in our, in our city? Um, you know, uh, obviously we know who the governor is. We may know who the mayor is, but the district attorney, the prosecutor carries so much weight and his assistant district attorneys carry so much weight in terms of being able to prosecute who, the, who they want to prosecute based on just what they believe. So and another thing that we need to do uh, because of we basically have a two party system, we need to make sure that we educate ourselves on the candidates themselves so we can vote for people um, in terms of their values and their policies not just because they're Democrats or Republicans. Uh, Lasia needs no, you know, sort of explanation. Um, we acquired her in free agency, but we absolutely knew what we were um, in for in terms of her advocacy, in terms of how she really wants to be and press forward um, in the name of women, in the name of gender equality, in the name of black and brown people, and obviously for LGBTQ initiatives. Like I will never not vote because the people who fought for me to show up and vote. Like I'm voting for the ancestors. I'm voting for the women who couldn't vote. Like I'm voting for all the people and all the rights that they're trying to take away. And so make the best decision you can with what you have. Like you're not a sellout if you vote. Like I think there's some of that narrative starting to come. Well, like I'm not part of the system anymore. It's like, we still need you to show up and we're still gonna be fighting for more. We're not settling because we're voting right now. And last but not least, um, our moderator, Angela Yee, obviously, um, a New Yorker, um, The Voice, really, a national syndicated show in The Breakfast Club, you know, you can't have a better person to kind of guide that conversation. And Angela um, has been an ambassador with BSC for some time now. And you don't even realize the impact, like my goddaughter was um, staying here with me a little bit this summer. She was going to college in New York. And everywhere I go to eat in Brooklyn is like a black owned restaurant, right? And so I was taking her to all these different restaurants and not even thinking about it. And then when everything was happening, she did this post like, I just want to thank my godmother for taking me to all these black owned restaurants, because it really does mean something when you can see people owning businesses and especially on kids when they see somebody doing something and they're like, oh, that person looks like me. They come from where I come from. And that means I can get into that same position in that space as well. So I do think, you know, it's so important to support black owned businesses. We will be streaming um, this event, but you'll be able to pick it up if you visit nyliberty.com in our video section. Um, and this will be posted on YouTube, on our YouTube channel. Excellent. We'll make sure to pop all of those links in for everyone. Kia, it does seem as though the WNBA is moving forward with plans to have a condensed season in Florida. Mm -hmm. And so what will this uh, format look like for your team as you're still hoping to connect Liberty fans to Liberty basketball this summer? Sure. Incredibly excited that our season is, is going to happen this summer. The announcement was made um, just this week um, that we'll, we'll head down to um, IMG Academy in Bradenton, Florida for a cadence season um, in a fanless environment. Um, with that being said, you know, there's tons and tons of planning and sort of um, getting ready for that moment in this completely new and unique situation that we'll be in. Um, we are absolutely planning to, you know, have folks from the business side on site. Um, this is a moment in time um, that that should be captured and needs to be captured. And, and dare I say, um, we've got almost a completely new team um, and we've got a rookie class that people want to see. Um, and obviously that's spearheaded by uh, Sabrina Ionescu. So Lots in store, lots of work to be done um, before tip off happens, but we are, you know, feverishly planning on what we'll do um, to cover the team, generally speaking, um, but also of significant importance is how um, their voices will still be able to contribute to the social justice initiatives that, you know, we really um, consider a part of our DNA. Um, you know that we typically celebrate unity in you know late July or August and we um, are um, planning right now accordingly um, be it virtual um, albeit what we can do to reach back and connect with um, the community in Brooklyn um, every idea is is in a good idea at this point um, but we are um, all ears and working um, in a lot of collaboration with our players and our coaches um, they voice many, many thoughts on this particular um, subject. 
Yeah, I think it's interesting comparing um, the two platforms, obviously, that the NBA have and, and the WNBA has. And so I think, one, we were like, us returning um, is not a distraction in the same way that men are, because the reality is, right, women are given like 5% of all media coverage. It's a shame. Um, but that what you spoke to, Garrett, is using that platform in that moment. And so I think it's really interesting with the NBA would have a platform like Kyrie can play or not. And people are going to listen to what he says, but right. we're, our strength is in numbers. So us returning to play is like, this is kind of our bigger moment to have the games on ESPN, to have people paying attention. Um, similar to you, Gary, like, what is the court going to look like? What is the messaging going to be like? Is there, you know, the media blackout where you're like, I won't answer questions unless we're also asking me a question about the movement. So I'm making sure like you cannot make this just about sports, just about basketball, because we refuse to, you know, just be the black bodies that entertain you. We all know it's all cool. We love black people. They're our favorite artists, our favorite dancer, our favorite um, athlete across the sport. But when they're not entertaining us, we're not as comfortable. We don't want to tolerate them. And so I think that's the moment we have and that people have really struggled with with sport now is that we want to say sports aren't political, but they've been political this whole time. And we so we're excited to see where we where we net out on the other side um, and how we can we can really charge toward impacting um awareness really well kia we appreciate you coming on to to give us the the lowdown and what we can expect for juneteenth uh that will be very exciting as well as uh, what fans can expect for the upcoming WNBA season i don't think i've ever ever told anybody this um my friend claudia used to be really close with Alyssa thomas and Connecticut was playing in MSG and we went and I saw the torch patrol and they had the cute little seafoam dresses and I was like I did not know the WNBA had cheerleaders like I just didn't know because like you know growing up we didn't see that the Charlotte Sting didn't have cheerleaders like what what is that <laughs> and so <laughs> I found the coach online and I was like hey I want to be a part of like torch patrol that's what the name of the squad was and she was like, I think you need to do Knicks. And I was like, that's, that's not what I asked you. <laughs> I want to be a part of Torch Patrol. And so I did a year of Knicks just to be able to do Torch Patrol. Oh, um, so you a graduate yeah. up to Torch Patrol. Yes. Yeah. It, it, it's funny because like, no shade to the W, but like people, that's people's vacation months for like the entertainment team. So they're like, oh, we don't want to do it this year. I'm like, this is the only thing I want to do. So come Knicks tryouts <laughs> the next year. I'm like all nervous about tryouts. And then she was like, Ari, like, what, what are you worried about? And I was like, I'm worried about making the team so I can be on the Liberty. And she was like, are, are you are you kidding me? And I was like, well, yeah, this is like what I want to do. And then That's um, whenever they ask our availability for the summer, and I'm like, I'm really interested in Torch Patrol. She was like, we know that that's exactly why you're here. So <laughs> it, it all started because I watched Alyssa Thomas play at MSG. I think it was 2014 or 20, it was 2014. I saw Alyssa play and I saw that um, the Liberty had cheerleaders and I wanted in. 